we are looking for love we want to do it our way mm -hmm. nobody wants to find out how god wants us to love people or we don't even read books about relationships we don't read books about marriages but we want to love the way that we are made we are emotional beings mm -hmm. so everybody has a sense of wanting another person which i think is natural that's how god made us but on the other side human beings are delicate mm -hmm. i think human beings are the most difficult to deal yeah. with on, on this <laughs> universe <laughs> what god thinks about relationships and all of that that's what I think this generation has it all, all wow. wrong. Once again, we are back and this is my beautiful guest that I have today. And as usual, you know, we talk about love and relationship. And today we'll be interviewing our beautiful, call her BBO. That's my personal name I have for her, Black Beauty. She's going to tell us a lot, not too much into her personal life, but what she thinks when it comes to love and relationship and things that are going on within this generation, especially the youth. A lot of people are putting it on wrong. <laughs> Let's see what she has for us and the education that she's going to share with us here. You are welcome to Race of Love. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm very honored to be here, actually. Yeah. My name is Joyce. People in this space know me as Evolve because the name of my channel is Evolve with Joycey. So you can call me Joycey or Evolve, whichever works. I cook, I have a food business. <laughs> and then I have a YouTube channel. So on my channel, I talk about things that makes us better versions of ourselves. And mm -hmm. I think that in as much as we are all living our lives, because influence is like the newest mm -hmm. normal. Mm -hmm. Whether you like it or not, somebody is influencing yeah, exactly, you. Exactly. And your life can go a certain way because of the person you constantly listen to. So my channel is just devoted to helping us all including myself mm -hmm. to become better versions of ourselves so yeah. that's basically what i do on my channel she has interesting videos and guys you know how we do it i'll put the link in the description box below so that you guys can check her channel out and follow her she has some amazing videos that you can enjoy and today you go here bro <laughs> oh don't do that yeah on this channel we talk about anything love and okay. relationship what what is your general idea when it comes to love and relationship this generation what are we missing there's a lot of things going on tells us that there's a lot of chaos in people's relationship yeah. okay so when it comes to love and relationship and yeah <laughs> I think that love is the ultimate. The Bible says that love is the greatest, mm -hmm. right? So there is nothing wrong with people finding love, people trying to be in relationship. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. But what I think this generation is missing is the God factor. Oh, because, wow. Why do you say that? Because whether we accept it or not, where did we hear of love from? And you see, when someone brings out something, it's like going to buy a Tesla car and not wanting hey, to Tesla. read. Tesla. Hey, <laughs> guys, you know Tesla car. <laughs> Charlie, her test is big. <laughs> Amen. So it's like going to buy a Tesla car, mm -hmm. bringing it to Ghana and saying that you use it like maybe use mm -hmm, a Toyota. Mm -hmm. It's an electric car to the yeah. best of my knowledge. So you need the manual of that car like mm -hmm. every other thing. Mm -hmm. So where love originated from is from God. So mm -hmm. if we try to find relationships and love and marriages, which is the legal one, mm -hmm. <laughs> without God, I think that we have it all wrong. We are looking for love. We want to do it our way. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to find out how God wants us to love people or how what God thinks about relationships and all of that. That's what I think this generation has it all, wow. all wrong. I'm asking this for someone watching. Yeah. What about the person that doesn't know God? Because it will shock you there are people there who don't know God or yeah. believe in God or people um, still know there is God, but they don't believe in God. Such people, what should they do? I don't know if I want to say what I really think about that, but I think that everybody believes in God. Everybody, mm -hmm. near, everybody on this earth believes in God. Well, there are some people who are yet to hear about Jesus, who is how we will get to God. Mm -hmm. But as for God, everybody, the Bible says that he has now written the commandments on the tablets of our hearts. So once you are born, there's a saying that mm -hmm. will be in Kolani, I mean, That saying is, I think it's one of the truest sayings yeah, in this, you know, in this, um, our country and all of our culture and mm -hmm. all of that. But everybody, I believe, believes in God. Mm -hmm. Human beings just don't want to be accountable. Oh. That's why people say that I don't believe in God because they are thinking that when God comes to demand from them, they can escape by saying I didn't believe in you. So I think that people just don't want to be accountable. That's why they think that it's an easy way out to say that I don't believe in God when they actually do. 
But if you are saying you don't believe in God, mm -hmm. really, I think that you ask. Ask about how to do relationship. Because just like everything, you learn everything. But people behave as if they intrinsically know how to do mm -hmm. relationship. They don't ask. They don't read books. If for nothing at all, there are books on relationships. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you can argue with me that the person who wrote the book doesn't know it all. But you also don't know. Mm. So why not learn the little the person knows, mm. you know? So I think that this generation, if you say you don't believe in God, read books about relationships, at least. <laughs> Please, read books. <laughs> I have a follow-up question, yeah, but sure. before we continue, this is a new series that I've started. We invite guests here, we talk about love and relationship, and they share with us what they know about love and relationship, just to inform and also educate people watching that. So if this is your first time, please don't forget to subscribe, be part of this family. Um, if you have any question, comment in the comment section, let me know. Um, she will be in the comment section to answer us, or if the needs arise that we do a part two, we'll bring that to you. And on this series, uh, we have a, a second section where mm -hmm. there's a list of over 100 questions that she will select five numbers and we'll read the questions that are attached to the numbers and then she will give us an answer. So okay. thank you for your patience. Before I follow up with that question, yeah. I first want to ask that, how best will you define love? Because there are a lot of people out there that don't know what love is. Love, 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 love. Okay, I think that love is giving yourself or giving care to someone who does not deserve it or cannot give it back to you in plain terms. We have been brought up to think that love is to someone who loves you back or someone who can give you their love back. Mm -hmm. But that little boy on the street, you mm -hmm, don't know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when you're able to give them anything, whether it's your attention, your food, your money, because that boy cannot give you back what you gave him and may not even show you back that same love, what you do for him, I can call love. I don't know if that makes sense. It makes sense. But let me give this example. You know the street children mm -hmm, around mm -hmm, the mm -hmm, <laughs> Accra mm -hmm, mall? Mm -hmm. One time I met someone, so a little girl, and then she was asking me for money. I didn't have extra money for her, but I was taking some chocolates and I had some left. Okay. I took it out and I gave it to her. Mm -hmm. You won't believe what she did. She took the chocolate, dumped it and gave me a pinch. That left a sore on my hand. Oh. I was so pissed. I was like, ah, is it not food you are going to buy? This is what I could give you. So that person is a total stranger. Mm -hmm. If you are able to show love, like to show care or affection or concern for that person who cannot give it back to you, that is love. Wow. So love is basically showing concern or care to someone who cannot necessarily give it back to you. But do we always have to expect people to give back when we show them love? I think that the principle of love is that it will be reciprocated in the long run, if not in the short run. So back to the street children, right? If I see this child the first time, I give to the child and they notice me, I give to them over time. The next time I pass by, the least that child can do is to smile at me. And that's love being reciprocated. Wow. Only that it will take time for it mm. to be. So the principle of love is that it will be reciprocated. That's why I have a belief that everybody in this world will come to accept God. Because God has shown us a love that is so huge. Some people have not accepted God because they still cannot understand the magnitude of love that's been shown to them. But with time, love will definitely be reciprocated. Wow. That's my opinion. No, this is deep. All right, back to my main question I wanted right. to ask you. Everybody wants to love someone, wants to be in a relationship. But do you think in our own way we prepare towards this kind of love relationship? Mm, I think we don't. Back to the same matter. We don't even read books about relationships. We don't read books about marriages, but we want to love. The way that we are made, we are emotional beings. Uh -huh. So everybody has a sense of wanting another person, which I think is natural. That's how God made us. But on the other side, human beings are delicate. Uh -huh. I think human beings are the most difficult to deal yeah. with on, on this universe. <laughs> you got to a time God was upset with man. Yeah. God was saying that he regrets creating man, you know. We are difficult to deal with. So the best and safest way is to prepare for this love or relationship you are so craving for. So that you don't lose it. People don't even take the time to study the people they say they love. <laughs> like, uh -huh, uh -huh. do you get? Uh -huh. So, how do you love me? You don't know the things I like. You don't know the things I don't like. You don't know what it means when I'm quiet. You don't know what it means when I'm talking. You don't know when to keep quiet. You know, people have to, we, 
including myself we all have to like prepare for love because that's like opening up your space for another person to come into it it's like inviting someone into your house and your house is in a mess Wow. You don't have food in your kitchen. Like, how are the you hosting? Is dirty. The kitchen is dirty. The room <laughs> I know is because dirty. You are into food, yeah. so. <laughs> the kitchen is dirty. You don't have food. But you've told someone that, oh, come and visit me. How can you open your gates up to someone when your whole house is in a mess, not prepared to meet someone? So, absolutely, we need to prepare for. Yes, that's true. We need to prepare. But someone watching us will ask that what is the importance of me preparing before I get there? Like, can't I learn on the job? I think the only on the job thing about love is marriage. Even that, people do counseling before they go to marriage. That's a form of preparation. People go on vacations just to know themselves, like a couple. They go on separate vacations to know more about themselves before they get married. So there should be some form of preparation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why should you prepare? So that you reduce the casualties. Because whether you prepare or not, there may be surprises in there. But it will be more if you don't have any form of preparation, in my own opinion. It's like getting married and you don't have a house. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you going to sleep? <laughs> yeah, it's like well, after marriage, you figure it out. No. You know, Inga, there's this problem that we say that uh, I, 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 like you have to see meet a woman before, before you, you make lay your bed. bed. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. Thank you so much. Please, if you have any question, you have anything yeah. to say, don't forget to type it in the comment, comment section, and we'll get back to you. Um, Absolutely. I wish this was live, but anyway, nah. no, there's this major problem among youth of today. I have two questions that I want to ask you. I want you to address that thing. For me. One is about bestie and okay. then the other one is about cohabiting but okay. first of all let's tackle the bestie issue uh, it looks like nowadays the best tea <laughs> that's so it's a sad. different thing altogether uh, i was shocked when i heard things people do in the name of bestie mm. and all that what do you have to say about that okay i think that this generation again we just keep destroying things having a best friend who is a male in my opinion is not wrong Especially the person is single, That's you the person being is not married. Being a female, a having a, a best friend who is a male, I don't see anything wrong with that. Problem is when that is just an excuse to do something. I am against premarital sex, premarital anything. Yeah. Because I'm Christian. And aside Christianity, I don't think it's good morals. There's something called friends with benefits. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's what people are doing now by calling it best, best. friends. Okay. There's friends with benefits. I don't subscribe to that. But people, because of, again, accountability, people say that, oh, let's be friends, but let's do things. Because they don't want to be committed to say that I'm dating you or I'm in a relationship with you. However, you don't even have to be sleeping together in a relationship. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. You, you, you are allowed. Free, free, in a free, relationship. Free. Yeah. You are not even allowed. It's plain negligence. Mm -hmm. It's just people thinking they are smart and all of those things. You just go with people, they are friends and they do stuff. But having a best friend, like a close best friend is like, having a very close friend Someone right you can someone you can confide in confide in like what's wrong with that so let's say maybe you are a lady yeah and you are in a relation uh, like you have a bestie yeah. someone you call your bestie yeah. but you 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 notice he's trying to make some advances At and you. all that how best can you handle the situation the, that situation okay this is an advice from my pastor mm -hmm. but let me say it here because it really blessed me you have to address the situation. Mm -hmm. I am a very vocal person and I don't like people who are not vocal. Like somebody, there are certain people who just see things going on and they are quiet about it. Don't I don't like such people. It. I don't like such people at all. Because I feel like once you talk about a situation, mm -hmm. you can sit as adults, unless you are children. Mm -hmm. If you are children, you shouldn't be having emotions in the first place. You are a child, go to school and learn. <laughs> but if you are an adult, you should be able to talk about something that's going on. So if you have a best friend who is single, mm -hmm. you are also single, mm -hmm. but you see that he's making advances. I mean, we, are, we, we all see that. You can't close your eyes to certain yeah. things. Once you see that, call for a meeting, sit down and talk about it. Ask him what he's really doing. After all, you're friends. You mm -hmm. should be able to talk about things. Does he like you? Is he developing feelings for you? Do you feel the same? If not, make things clear that you know what? It's just friendship I can do. But if you are single as well, and you also feel the same, you should talk like adults. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's no, there's, there, there's no harm in trying. Just talk about it. <laughs> talk about because it. Because they even advise us to marry our friends, not so. Exactly. <laughs> Unless exactly. the person is a married man or mm -hmm. a married woman yeah. who is your bestie, and the other person is having feelings, still talk about it. Make things clear, because you see, there's a way that sin mm -hmm. thrives in silence. Exactly. 
Oh, two people are somewhere. Mm. When the place is quiet. Quiet, quiet. Ah, Things will be clicking. This will be happening. That there will be four that talk, <laughs> talk about it. Absolutely mm -hmm. talk about it. No matter how difficult it is, call the person and say, you know what, you're my friend. This is what is happening. What can we do about it? Talk about it. Once you talk about it, I think the absolutely. Issue, wow. the issue now, what, what about the cohabiting? It's like the percentage at which people ah. are cohabiting, the name of we are studying each other. Do you agree people should cohabit? Absolutely not. Why? I mean, I know people who have cohabited and they never get, got married. Mm. Cohabiting, again, is not scriptural. Mm -hmm. It's not morally right. You see, when you cohabit, both of you give each other a certain perception about yourself. You just don't talk about it. In your head, why is she coming to sleep in my house when we are not married? Especially, it goes against, I mean, permit me to be sexist in a moment, but especially mm -hmm. it goes against the women. Because if you think you cohabited in the name of love, the guy will be second guessing you, trust me. In his wow. mind, you can cohabit with another man. That's what's happening in his mind. He's just not saying it. And the chances, the tendencies that he will leave you is very high. Oh, because at because the end you came to day... cohabit. And mm -hmm. wh what are you doing cohabiting? They, they, they said in the name of getting to know each other. Oh, my dear, you can't know somebody even if you cohabit with him for 10 years. There was a married couple talking and the man said after 10 years, he was seeing traits in his wife that he had never seen over the years they'd been friends and dated. Then you cohabit forever. So that means if you cohabit, there are still things you... You will not know, find out. You will not find out. And even when you get married, there, there are, are still things... things. Oh. Yeah. Because we forget mm. that people change. Exactly. And times change. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. you were cohabiting with this person, they were slim. When you get married, they are going to give birth, they are going to increase in size. Mm. In all, what would be the best advice that you give to this youth when it comes to love and relationship? My best advice will be that one, don't rush into relationships mm -hmm. or love or anything. Two, don't take don't try to take God out of it. Mm -hmm. God is interested in every aspect of our lives we've been brought up to think that god just wants you to pray and read your bible everything god wants you to do is for your own good ah i said these things yesterday somewhere <laughs> it's for your own good so god is not outside love and relationship he is the originator of love he's the king of emotions if he didn't have emotions he won't say he's a jealous god yeah, exactly don't rush and don't underestimate love and relationship prepare for it I mean, if I want to go over it again, don't rush into it. Don't try to leave God out. Don't underestimate it and prepare for it. Absolutely. Wow. How do you prepare for it? Read books. Interesting. Pray mm. about the people mm -hmm. you are falling mm -hmm. in love with. Mm -hmm. Tell mm -hmm. God about all those things. Yeah. And you will have a, a better experience. Interesting. Thank you so much. And we are moving on to the Teacher, second welcome. part. Let's see how the second part goes. There are some dangerous questions there. <laughs> so, so we have from 1 to 100 plus. First five numbers, which one are you going in for first? Three. Hey! Can I change it? No, go change it. <laughs> you love it. <laughs> okay, so question three says, says that. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah. What food reminds you of your partner and why? <laughs> oh, easy question. I don't have a partner. <laughs> I don't have a partner. Okay, but uh, previously. Previously. But I'm not married. <laughs> you guys are putting me on that phone. Alright, she has just found a way to I'm not married. escape I don't the have a question. Partner. When I All get right. married, I may have to come back <laughs> okay, and answer so, that question. Yeah. Um, four, four more. more. Okay, so next. Seven. Seven. Hmm. Ah. I have to twist this question. But this is what it says. When did you know you wanted to be in a relationship? When should one know when he or she wants to enter into a relationship? Back to my pastor's answer to that. Mm -hmm. When you feel like you're not ready. When you feel well, like you're no, ready. When you don't want to be in a relationship. When you don't want to, to be, be in a relationship. relationship. That's it means when you are ready to be in a relationship. Wow. So on the flip side, when you are craving to be in a relationship, chances are that you are not ready to be in a relationship. Oh, this is cheap. My pastor, I agree. A, a little explanation for the sake of the people watching. Yeah. You see, let's let's do this in plain terms. Whatever you rush for, they say when you rush, you do it. Crash. You crash. So if you are there, and, oh, I want to date, I want to date, chances are that boom, 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 boom. you mm. haven't prepared, you are not ready. Probably you are just pressured by a friend, a friend status mm. posting their bay and their boo. <laughs> and so it just means that you are not ready for it. But when you are by yourself, you are maturing, you are learning the word of God, 
you are reading books on relationships, mm. but yet you are not in, in a, a rush. Hurry. You are not in a haste to date some, meet someone and date someone quickly. Then it shows that you are matured enough to handle relationship. Then uh, you are ready. Guys, I hope you understand what it is. If you don't understand, you let me know in the comment section. Yes, please. I'll come and give you more. <laughs> Three more. Yeah, nine. Do you believe in love? Yes or no and why? Oh, absolutely believe in love. Yeah. Absolutely believe in love. And love is what God taught us. Love is what's holding this world, actually. Exactly. That's why I believe in love. I think it's the greatest emotion. If you love someone, you can go to the ends of the world for the person. You know what God did when he fell in love with us? Yeah. He brought his son, killed him for us. Yeah. So I think <laughs> love is absolutely mm -hmm. the, the greatest emotion. Okay, so I so believe in love. Yeah. Interesting. The fifth number will be... Let's okay. go to number two. Number two. Yes. Are you ready? Yeah. What's your favorite memory of dating your ex? Oh, my ex. Do I have an ex? You've been in a relationship before, right? I don't want to call that a relationship. It was a situation. Oh. What about this? <laughs> um, memory. Memory. Anything you you learned from it that you would love to share? Oh, anything I learned from that relationship. Mm -hmm. Since you don't have memory. Yeah. What I learned from that relationship is that don't like keep knowing your partner. Don't settle with just what you know. Because they can't people change. Like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think we underestimate change a lot. So keep knowing the person. So that when if the person has changed in a certain part of their life, you will know quickly and adjust if you can mm -hmm. or step out if you can't. Wow. Alright, so your bonus question. So any number. Yeah. Bonus. I'll give you seventy eight. What's your greatest fear when it comes to marriage? Wow. My greatest fear when it comes to marriage, I don't have a fear. You don't have a fear? Wow. Why don't you have a fear? Yeah, because what you fear happens. So I don't want to name anything and call it a fear. I mean, Job taught us well. Exactly. <laughs> so I don't have a fear when it comes to marriage. I'm very positive about marriage. Don't have fear for anything yeah. in life because what you fear will happen to you. Will happen to you. Yeah. If you read the book of Job, he said the thing that I feared most, I feared most, most had happened to me. Absolutely. I hope you guys really enjoyed this episode. Um, I hope you did. Charlie, this episode, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Aha. I don't know about you, so let me know in the comment section. I, guys, let's get interactive. Comment, let's know your thoughts. What do you think about this video? And if you think we should carry on with it and bring more people on this channel. Evolve, aka Auntie Joyce. The <laughs> correct Ghanaian pa. The <laughs> correct Ghanaian pa. It's good. Day. Thank you so much for coming. Thank and you for having me, Ni. Thank you are, so much for having me. We are, we are grateful. Me, me too. God bless you. Me too. Amen. But before we go, yeah. is there any message on your heart that you would love to share with people out there? Oh, okay. I think I have a message for the youth too. The youth in general and for the young ladies. So, the youth in general. I advise that we find God. Where the world is getting to end, you must have God. Otherwise, you, you can't continue. So whatever it is you are involved in, find God. Stop putting God on hold until the next year, until the next year. Time is running out. You were 20, now you are 21. Find God. Find God. To the young ladies, better yourself. Find people who are doing well the right way and aspire to be like them or more than them. Become a better version of, of yourself. yourself. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. It's, it's so interesting to sit down hearing yeah. things from your your perspective as as what you think, what you believe about love and relationship. We are so grateful for having you. Thank you. For you for you coming. Thank you. So, until then we we'll come your way with another episode. My name is Nia Yeke Ganyubi. And please do your best to check out the channel. I know you guys will love a video. I'll come your way with another interesting episode. See you guys. Bye. Bye.